you, Jesus. Thank you, King of Glory. Thank you, El Shaddai. Thank you, beginning and the end. Thank you, the first and the last. Thank you, the one and only great God. There is none like you. There will never be any like you. You are our Alpha, you are our Omega. You are our beginning, you are our ending. Faithful is your name, dependable is your name, reliable is your name, powerful is your name. Thank you, Father. There is not a friend like our Lord, Lord Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. There is not a friend like our Lord Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide Till that day is gone, there is not a friend like our Lord Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Good morning, my brethren. You are welcome. God bless you. There is not a friend like our Lord Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. There is not a friend like our Lord Jesus. One more. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till that day is gone. There is not a friend like our Lord. Jesus, no, not one, hallelujah, <laughs> good morning, my brethren, God bless you, it's a beautiful 22nd day of the month of September, 2024, no, not one, it's a beautiful Sunday morning, it's 10 0 GMT, my local time here in West Africa. You know my country by now. I don't need to keep shouting the name of my country. You already know where I'm speaking from. West Africa, Africa, and the world. Hallelujah. You are welcome. God bless you. Thank you for honoring God's invite this morning. And God also will honor you back. I also say that your time you are spending in his presence this morning will be highly rewarding in the name of Jesus. There shall be reversal of everything that is distasteful in your life today in the name of Jesus. There shall be a turnaround for good of all that has not been desirable in your life in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is that you might be expecting God to do in your life, this morning he will do it for you. He will answer you speedily. In the name of Jesus, because he's a faithful God. Very, very, very faithful. I know that. I've experienced it. I keep experiencing. How do I even confirm it? Today is a day we are all here today. Thank to to, hey, to minister to one another. Hallelujah. Can we pray and go into the day's word? Our Father and our God, we bless your holy name. There is none like you. There will never be any like you. 
You are our Alpha, you are our Omega, you are our beginning, you are our ending. We thank you for the miracle of sleeping and waking. We thank you for this beautiful day. It is a day you have made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. And our rejoicing in this beautiful day shall know no end. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for all that you did for us last week. We are extremely grateful. Thank you for what you have been doing since the beginning of the month and the beginning of the year. Father, once again, we thank you because today also you will take over this meeting from me. Take it over from your people. Have your way in our lives. Let there be a receptive heart in our hearts to be able to receive your word and bear fruit at once in our lives in Jesus' name. I soak this meeting in the blood of Jesus. Come against all activities of extraneous spirits in this meeting with the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name, O God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. The topic we are speaking this morning is titled, Today is your day. Today is your day. If you have been waiting for one thing or the other, today God will answer you. If your expectations have been very high and they are yet to manifest in the fiscal, they will all manifest in the fiscal today in the name of Jesus. The Bible says only believe. Only. No, you don't have any other works to do but just to believe. Hallelujah. Somebody says to you, oh, I'm coming tomorrow. I'm coming to give you something in your house tomorrow. And uh, you say, okay, thank you. I'll be expecting you. That's all. Just believe it. Hallelujah. And if you know the pedigree of such an individual, you know it's always very forthright with his promise. You just go to sleep and the following morning before even daybreak, you hear a knock on your door and say, hey, I'm here. This is what I promised you. That's the way God works. He's a faithful God. Hallelujah. Once he has promised you, you can be sure that pro that promise will see the light of day. The only thing that can prevent the promise from seeing the light of day is you and me. Hallelujah. No devil can stop God's promise for your life. No demon can stop God's promise for your life. No witch or wizard can stop God's promise or promises for your life. Once he has said it, I always tell people, consider it done. Hallelujah. In the beginning, the Bible says that God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. That's Genesis chapter 1 to 3. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God said, hallelujah, let there be light. Immediately there was light. If you read down the Genesis all the way down to the end, you will discover that progressively God was just saying, God said, let there be, let there be, let there be light, let there be firmament, let there be uh, creatures in the sea, let there be birds of beasts in the, in the field, let there be the birds of the air, let them be created. He was just saying, let there be vegetation, let there be this, let there be that. Hallelujah. Then the final one that he said was, let us create man. Hallelujah. Let us us create man, which is you and me and humanity in general, in our own image. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Let us create man in our own image. Immediately he spoke it, man was created. Hallelujah. And man became, and man was, like I always tell you, man was created originally, and even up to now. As a spirit being like God. The only difference after that was that man needed a casing like your body you have today. Your hands, your body, your face, and legs needed a casing. Just like the casing of your glasses, of your whatever. To be able to manifest on the planet Earth, to be able to move around. I'm sure you know there are so many spirits also living amongst us. Both the good, the bad, and the ugly spirits. They are there. Demonic spirits are all over the place. But you cannot see them because they don't have a body. 
God's spirit is also there. You cannot see him because he doesn't have a body like you. But you need a body to translate, to move around on this planet Earth. Those other spirits are also moving, but you cannot see them because they don't have a body. Hallelujah. That's why when God, when God says to you, he said, fear not. Fear not means his presence will be, his spirit will be with you on the planet. It might not be as visible as you want to see it, but it's there. Hallelujah. So that God that created man in his own image, in Genesis 1.26, when he says something into your life, then you better believe it. You better believe it because that's where your life consists of. That is where the power of your existence is in his promise, in his word. The Bible says, has he not said it? Will he not come to pass? So whatever God says to you from time to time, even today, please just simply believe it. Consider it done. Hallelujah. If the devil tells you anything, disbelieve it. If the demons tell you anything, disbelieve it. If the witches and wizards tell you anything contrary, disbelieve them. They don't have the power of the word. Hallelujah. But if you make a mistake to simply believe them, you might be running into yourself, into a reality of manifestation of what you believe. So be careful what you believe. Hallelujah. Somebody said, hey, you are sick. You are going to die very soon. If you believe it, you will die very soon. Most likely you might die very soon. But if you don't believe it, you will live long. Hallelujah. You disbelieve them completely. Anything contrary to your life, disbelieve it. Anything that is in line with the will of God and promise of God for your life, believe it. Hallelujah. It might not happen immediately, but sooner than later, you begin to see manifestation. You see, you begin to see them in the physical. You begin to see the result. You begin to see fulfillment. You begin to see joy radiating all over your face, all over your body. Hallelujah, because you believe it. So today is your day. Hallelujah. For the Bible says that when you hear his voice today, do not harden your hearts. When you hear his voice, you are going through a hopeless situation, a very debilitating challenge of life. And God says, don't worry, fear not. I have solved the problem for you. Just believe it. That means solution has come to you today. There is sickness in your body. And the doctors are written you off. And says, oh, you, well, you have to use drugs for the next few years. Somebody told me. said, I've been using the, this drug for the last 20-something years. And I said, is that so? 20-something years just to control a particular ailment in the body. But when God comes to you today and says, don't worry, that ailment you are using drugs for, for 20-something years is healed. You better believe it. That means today is your day of healing. Today is your day of deliverance. Today is your day of restoration from sickness to divine health. Today is your day of afflictment. Today is the day sorrow has ended in your life. Hallelujah. So you better believe it. When you hear his voice today, do not harden your heart. Eh, they've been saying it before. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm restored. I, I've been promoted. I have not seen anything. Forget about what they have been saying before. A new dawn has happened today, the 22nd day of the month of September, 2020. Anything. Forget about what they have been saying before. A new dawn has happened today the 22nd day of the month of September, 2024. Whatever God says to you today is a done deal. Consider it a done deal. So I say to you, wherever you are, anywhere in the world, if you are facing one kind of challenge with your health, 
I declare you healed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. If you are facing a naughty challenge concerning your marriage or your relationship somewhere or your business, I declare restoration in that marriage, in that business this morning in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Don't forget that God confirms the word of his servants. And I happen to be one of his servants. So as I'm declaring it to you, just believe it. It's a done deal. Hallelujah. God told me several years ago. He said, don't worry, you are not going to go through the operation. I said, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. That was the end of it. I believed it. I'm talking of several years ago. <laughs> Hallelujah. That time, till now, I never needed the operation. The sickness that brought about needing the operation of my body, God healed me miraculously. Hallelujah. See me speaking to you. Some of you might not see me who are not subscribers to my live show, might not be seeing me live. Those who are subscribers will see me live. You see, it will be blank for those who are not subscribers. So please kindly subscribe so you, you can be seeing each other live. And uh, the word of God will manifest speedily, quickly also in your life. In Jesus. Kindly subscribe. Your subscription to my live show is not asking you to just surrender your resources. It's asking you to be of support to me and show a token of your love to God. Somebody, whoever shows a, shows a token of love to God, God will also reward them back. I'm sure you know that. I can always tell you, in the Bible says that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. God also says, whatever a man sows, he shall reap. You have sowed into my life by subscribing. God will reward you back abundantly, a multiple fold in the name of Jesus. And you are showing support for me. You will never, also, you also will never lack support. Anywhere you are in the world, wherever you need support from men and women, you will not lack that support. You will not lack help. You will not lack favor. Wherever you are needing help from even the elements of creation, the ground you are working on, the air you are breathing, the walls of your house, the walls of your offices, the roads that you are driving up, you will never lack some. Every one of them will support you in the name of Jesus. So, like I said, he said, let us create man in our own image. That's the end of the matter. Man was created. Let there be light. There was light. Let there be firmament. There was firmament. So, God is also saying to you today, you are healed from that sickness in Jesus' name. So, just believe it. So God is also saying to you, that relationship is restored. Just believe it. It is restored. Then it just, that business will prosper. That business will prosper. That your job, you will be promoted from time to time as it went due. So shall it be for you in the name of Jesus. That struggle over that challenge you are facing through has come to an end. That also ends the matter concerning that challenge. Hallelujah. The challenge will fizzle away. Because the Bible says in the book of Psalm 18, verse 44 and 45, it said, the strangers in that business, in that uh, body of yours that are causing sickness, in that relationship, he said, the strangers shall hear my voice. And what will happen to them when they hear your voice or my voice? He said, they shall cringe out of their hiding places. Who are the strangers, the demonic actors hiding in your body, hiding in that business, hiding in that relationship? He said they are strangers. Once they hear the voice of God that get out in the name of Jesus from that body, that body is healed, that business is restored, that the relationship is restored. They have no choice but to get out. They will call their bodies inside your body. They will call their bodies inside that business. Hey, <laughs> that man has commanded us to leave. That's the end of the matter. So, you are hearing his voice today. Today is your day. You are restored in Jesus' name. You are healed in Jesus' name. You are delivered from that bondage or that captivity in the name of Jesus. All your expectations shall see the light of the all. And I mean all. As long as they are in line with the will of God for your life, they will surely see the light of day. No devil, no demon has the capacity to frustrate your expectation. They don't have that capacity. So don't dis don't believe them. When they say country contrary to what God has said to you, 
disbelieve them, discard it, throw it into the garbage bin straight away. Once they bring it out, throw it away, garbage it in the name of, and stand firm in the word of God. Hallelujah. So we want to read the book of, uh, what do you call it? First Timothy, chapter, chapter 1, verses 11 to 17. Talking about no matter how wayward your life has been, no matter how far you have gone the wrong road, as long as you are the elected one of God, selected, sorry, selected one of God, you can always make a U-turn, and God's mercy will speak for you, and he will recover you back. Hallelujah. Can you imagine somebody going to the North Pole? Will he ever get to the North Pole? He won't get there. What will happen? He has to make a U-turn. Hallelujah. And you know, the another interesting aspect of this area we are discussing about is that even if the person does not know how to make a U-turn, God knows how to hijack them and recover them back their lives. He did that to Apostle Paul. Hallelujah. Paul, Apostle the Paul, God hijacked him on the way when he was going the wrong way. He, went, he was a major persecutor of the Christian body at that time. He was always persecuting Christians because he believed in the Jewish uh, system of worship, the old religious system, not believing Jesus Christ. So if they were anyone that did not believe in Jesus Christ, at that, I mean, did, did not believe in the Jewish system of worship at that time, Apostle Paul was always going after them to persecute them. But God loved him so much. On, on one of his journey to go and pick up some Christians to put them in jail, to persecute them, to kill them, God hijacked him. So that's why I, I always tell people, when you are the selected ones, if you, even if you don't make a U-turn, God will hijack you. So if you belong to those who cannot make a U-turn, who are going the wrong way today, I pray God will hijack you on the road of waywardness in the name of Jesus and turn your life back to him. In that, because it is in your interest. That's why you, your peace of mind lies. That is where your prosperity lies. That is where your destiny will be fulfilled. That is the arena where your destiny will be, will be fulfilled. That is the arena where your, the purpose of your life will see the light of day. That is the arena of life where, the, where the, your dreams, the dreams you have been dreaming, I'm dreaming about this, I'm dreaming about, will prosper. When your life is going the wrong way and God hijacks you and brings you back by force. That was what he did to Apostle Paul. I'm going to read it for you in the book of Timothy, chapter 1, verses 1, 11 to 17. And there are millions of people across the globe that are going the wrong way that God will hijack today in the name of Jesus. If you belong to them, God will hijack you today in Jesus' name. And if you are not, not the one that is hardened up, that God has made that he is going to make a U-turn and turn back and begin to go the right way, God will make you to make a U-turn this morning and begin to go the right way in the name of Jesus. Because you know, you will never get to your destiny if you are going the wrong way. I'm sure you know that. If you Google, and the Google, the Google is not giving you the right direction to your place of destination, you won't get there. So you need to Google God and say, am I on the right path? Please redirect my step to my destination. Hallelujah. For instance, let me give you an instance. If you are moving from one neighborhood to another neighborhood, and God knows that the neighborhood you are moving to, he, you know, because he sees the end from the beginning, he can see disaster ahead. He can see you be enrolling your children in the wrong school that could be fatal to their destiny. He can see you being moving into that neighborhood that some disasters are locking in advance, which you don't know. It could even be a year, two years, or a few years ahead. He will, he will, he will frustrate your effort to that neighborhood. Everything you are designed to 
a power to move you to, uh, to that neighborhood, God will frustrate it. Until he redirects you to that exact neighborhood where your peace of mind will be, where your children will go to school and go safely and return safely, where when you sleep at night, you will sleep with your two eyes closed in that neighborhood, he will force you to that neighborhood, he will direct you there. I'll give you an example. Several years ago, I was going to change my location to another location. And, uh, and I was, the agent who was going to take me to the new location, he, which he wanted me to inspect, was already waiting for me about 15 kilometers away. 15, well, let's say 12 kilometers away. You know what God did to me that day? On that road, to going to that place where I was to meet the agent, there was traffic, heavy traffic. And I said, no, I can't stay in this traffic. Let me go and pass another longer route to go and join the express road in front. And I turned back to go and join the longer route. Where the shorter route is, there was heavy traffic. So I said, let me go and pass the longer route. And I went to pass the longer route on my way to the, through the longer route. God said, stop in this estate. Stop here, stop here, stop here. He didn't tell me this is where he wanted. He just said, stop here. And I stopped. And I asked him, get man. I said, is there a space for me here? He said, yes. You can see the manager. He's inside. That was the end of the story. Hallelujah. And I moved into the neighborhood, and everything started moving well for me. Meanwhile, the other agent was calling me and said, Hey, are you still coming? I said, Sorry, I'm no, more, I'm no longer coming. I found the place God wants me to be. <laughs> Hallelujah. May God open your eyes to find you the place where he wants you to be located in the name of Jesus. To that right place of work, to that right business that you must do to be profitable, highly profitable for you in Jesus. May God open your eyes to the right schools for your children. May God open you to the right association you will need to have from henceforth. So you don't go into illicit associations. You don't go into illicit relationship. May God open your eyes to the right husband, to the right wife, to the right partner you are going to engage with. In that, see, once you go into the wrong route, everything will begin to be wrong because it's the wrong route anyway. But once you relocate back to the right location, to the right route, to the right place, to the right relationship, what will happen? Everything will be right because it's right. And that's why the Bible says that if the foundation be faulty, if the foundation of that relationship is faulty, if the foundation of that house is faulty, if the foundation of that neighborhood is faulty, if the foundation of that business is faulty, if the foundation of that job is faulty, the Bible says, what can the righteous do? Nothing. Until the foundation is corrected, until the relationship is corrected, until the right spouse is met, until the right relationship is engaged, until the right job is engaged, until the right business is engaged, you are not likely to make profit. You are not likely to have peace of mind. You are not likely to live in divine health. Until you begin to eat the right food, until you begin to live right, you might not enjoy divine health. So, a lot of times God will have to force you to come back. A lot of times God will have to open your eyes to adjust, to make a paradigm shift in order to begin to walk back to the right location, to the right peaceful mind, to the right things, when everything will begin to be right for you. Hallelujah. So God has a way of calling back people when they are going the wrong way. May you be among those he will call back this morning. If by adventure you are going the wrong way, you are in the wrong relationship, you are in the wrong association, you are in the wrong business that is frustrating your life. No profit, no profit. You are just struggling and struggling and struggling. You are in the wrong neighborhood. God will redirect your steps this morning in Jesus' name. And God does that, especially and mostly 
for those he has selected. He has, he has, he has known them from the beginning. And that's for those who are selected. And those who are also not selected. The Bible refers to them as children of perdition. Children of perdition that don't belong to God. They just came into the fold to come and either spy or to go or on a holiday to come and just enjoy themselves and go back into darkness. There was a story of... Uh, a servant of God, so he said, he calls himself a servant of God, a pastor who established a church. I'm sure some of you must have heard the story. He established a church and he was struggling with the church because he wasn't called in the first place. He wasn't an elected one. He wasn't selected. And somewhere along the line, he won lottery of a few hundred thousand dollars what did he do? He abandoned the church and went to set up a nightclub. <laughs> Can you believe that? <laughs> he abandoned the church. He said, let the members find their way to heaven. He has found his place of comfort in the nightclub because he won a few hundred thousand dollars. And I was telling to people, I said, hey, <laughs> this guy was never part of the people of the kingdom of God in the first place. He was never part. He only came on a holiday. Now that he has found his rightful place, he has just relocated to that place. So there is a positive side, there is a negative side. It's a negative one I just mentioned. So when God is calling you to come back, you are doing the wrong business. So don't do that business. Don't go into this particular business. This is the business I want you to do. And you stop that business. You go into the one he has told you. You begin to see fruitfulness. You begin to see prosperity. You begin to see abundance. You are in the wrong relationship. You want to marry that guy. You are already caught him. God says, no, don't marry that guy. Don't marry that girl. Immediately, you abandon that relationship. Immediately. You don't even continue. Please, I don't want to see you again. Don't even give me a call. Don't text me. I don't want to see you again. You end it abstractly. And immediately, God opens your eyes to the right person. Engage with that person. Don't even waste time. I remember when I was uh, going to be married. Uh, I've been dating all kinds of women that time. I wasn't fully born again that time. I wasn't born again at that time. So I was dating all kinds of women and all that. But immediately I found a particular one. It wasn't up to a two weeks. I said, no, this is one I'm going to marry. Hallelujah. That was almost about 40 years ago. Almost about, yes, this are my next year will be 40 years in marriage. Today, we are still married. I made up my mind two weeks after the relation. I said, this is when I want to get married. 40 years on by next year, we are still married. So when you see the right one, you will quickly engage with it. When you see the wrong ones, disengage with the wrong ones. If I had married the wrong one at that time, maybe after two years, three years, we would have divorced. And I married another one, the wrong girl again, after five years, ten years, you divorce. But once you see the right thing, you engage with it straight away. You don't miss it. Hallelujah. So, once God gives you the green light that he wants you in his kingdom, don't harden your heart. If you harden your heart, you know what he will do? you begin to frustrate all your efforts. You begin to struggle and struggle and struggle to move forward, but you can't move forward because God is the one that is becoming a stumbling block in your path, going the wrong direction. He wants to redirect your path to the right direction. So don't struggle with it. That's why the Bible says, when you hear his voice today, which is the title of our topic today, today is your day, don't harden your hearts. There are some people God will be calling. For five, ten years, they won't, they won't listen. But within the five, ten years he's calling them, he will be giving them some time. He will be giving them some time. When it's about time he is to bring them in, he will, make all, he will close all other doors. They will have no choice but to come back to him because he has selected them. That's why we always say that there's a selection before an election. Hallelujah. 
The one that will be elected to that position, God would have selected him. The one that will occupy that uh, promoted position, God would have selected him. So today, God has selected you to occupy your next higher level to, into divine health, into victory, into success, into promotion, and above all, into salvation, into his kingdom. Do not harden your heart, my friend, anywhere you are in the world. Let me quickly read it because my time is moving. Uh, verse 11. Let me start from verse 11. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 11 says, According to the glorious gospel of the, of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust, as Apostle Paul speaking here now, after God had arrested him and captured him into his kingdom. May God capture you into his kingdom. You know, it's, when he captures you into his kingdom, it's because he loves you. If he doesn't love you, he won't give a he doesn't. He won't even care less about you. He won't even bother about you. He won't even give a damn. But when he says, no, I want him, then this man, this woman is mine. Hallelujah. May you be among those God will call out and say, you are mine. It's a privileged position. It's a privileged place to be when God counts you to be among his own. Look how he said, which was committed to me, verse 12. And I thank Jesus Christ our Lord, who had enabled me, that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. I can tell you straight away this morning, that you are one of the selected one of God. I can tell you, I don't need to be a soothsayer to say that. How do I know? Because you are on this program this morning. You are not here by accident. God doesn't do anything by accident. It's because you have been selected for ascension to eternal glory. For ascension into eternal joy. For ascension into eternal manifestation of his will. You have already been selected. That's why you are here. So you are not here by accident. Verse 13. Who was before, who was before a bl blasphemer? Who was before a blasphemer? Paul was referring to himself as a blasphemer. A persecutor, which I told you earlier, persecuting Christians. And injurious, and injurious, injurious. But I obtained mercy. Did you hear that? May you obtain mercy today for God to count you worthy to be grafted in, into his kingdom for higher levels. In the name. See, when God grafts, grafts you into his kingdom for higher level, what does that tell you? It means that you are now above all, above demons above witches, above wizards, above situations, above circumstances, above sicknesses, above diseases, above poverty, above shame, above embarrassment. You are now above all. Those things will locate to the underbelly of your feet when it grabs you into the kingdom. It's a fantastic location to be in my dwelling to the underbelly of your feet when it grabs you into the kingdom. It's a fantastic location to be, my brethren. It's a fantastic place to be. That's why I always tell people, once it brings you into his kingdom, you have entered into the evil free zone of life. Evil will see you and run away. Disaster will see you and run away. Accident will see you and quickly torpedo itself into the drainage. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So those are some of the benefits of being grafted, of belonging to the kingdom of God. Verse 14. Verse uh -huh. in Jewish. I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in the so in unbelief. He was doing all those persecution, all those injury to Christians, all those blasphemy against Christians. He was doing it because of unbelief. He didn't believe at that time. He was not a believer. He was not a member of the kingdom. 
verse 14. And the grace of our Lord, our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. Verse 15. This, there is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Did you hear that? Those who have been living wayward life, Christ came to come and save them. They are regarded as sinners. Those who have turned their backs to God, they are regarded as sinners. We were like that too. Who turned our backs to God? We were just living wayward life, all kinds of immoral life, all kinds of dirty, despicable life. We were living it. But He had mercy on us and He brought us in. Today, He's going to have mercy on you. Today, He's going to have mercy over your expectations, over your business, over your job, over your family, over your children, over anything that you are desiring mercy of God to speak for. In your life, God will show you mercy today. He showed Apostle Paul mercy. He finished well. He showed me mercy. I'm able to preach to you today confidently, comfortably, with ease, without struggle, knowing that all my needs, all my cares have been taken care of completely. So that same mercy that spoke for Apostle Paul, that is speaking for me, and so many other millions of people across the globe, that same person will speak for you today also. In the name of Jesus. You better believe it. Hallelujah. Verse 16. How be it? For this cause I obtained mercy, that in the first, that, that in me first, Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering. Long suffering. You know, while he was still doing us, God was patient with him. He was doing all kinds of injury and blasphemy and persecution. God was patient, long suffering, long suffering, for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on Him to life everlasting. So, so a lot of people are still living, living wayward life across the globe today. That God knows so, most of them are probably His. He will be waiting for them for the right time to catch them. Hallelujah! At the right time, He caught me. I'm talking of myself. He brought me into the kingdom. Hallelujah. Where I have the perfect peace of mind like never before until I came into his kingdom. Where I have met the only solution provider to all my problems like never before until I came into his kingdom. You are going all over the place searching for solution for this, for that, for that. We never got the solutions. We never. They were all counterfeit. But when we came into his kingdom, we had perfect solution. Hallelujah. You can see me smiling. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because we are in the right location. We are rightly located inside of him. That's uh, 17, the last verse there. Now unto, unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. And be honor and glory for, to God Almighty for your life forever and ever. For my life forever and ever. For exhibiting unconditional love towards you and me. Hallelujah. Now, look at the case of the prodigal son. You remember the case of the prodigal son? Let's open the book of Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. So there's always a, a time for turning, turn, making a U-turn. No matter how wrong road you have gone, how long you have gone on the road, wrong road, you must always make a U-turn back. Because if you don't make a U-turn back going on the wrong road, you will never arrive at your place of destination. That's why one of those days I, I told the, I was, I told the hostesses I was tra traveling. On the, I was a young man that time. I was traveling on a, on a transatlantic flight from Europe to the Americas several years ago as a student. I was going to do my master's on the other side that time. And I said to the, I said to the, yeah, I, said, I said, can I, can I, can you tell the pilot I want to see what the cockpit looks like? <laughs> I tell the pilot, I want to see what the cockpit looks like. We were flying in a Boeing 747 seven, seven seven, with about 500 and something passengers on board. 
seven hours flight non-stop across the Atlantic. They said, okay, I'll she will tell the pilot. About three hours down the journey into, uh, across the Atlantic that time, uh, they sent for me, the pilot, the captain sent for me. And, uh, and I was glad that he sent for me. I was so excited. Uh, and I say, said, okay, uh, he now said, how are you introduce himself as a captain? And there were about five of them there at the cockpit there. And he started explaining to me how the uh, operations was and the, the heading to the Americas. Uh, that I don't want to mention the city because he... Uh, <laughs> and he explained to me, said they would have logged their journey from where they took me in Europe. I also don't want to mention the name of the country. And to the Americas, they would have logged the journey from there. So they followed the path of that journey straight to their destination. If they don't lock it in, then they could be going anywhere. But from the beginning, they lock it. God has locked your destiny for fulfillment from the day you are born. Even if you go wayward, somewhere along the line, God has a way of bringing the wayward ones back to him. If you are stubborn, you say, I won't come, I won't come. He knows how to block your path completely that you'll not be able to go. But he has locked the journey. That was what the pilot told me. He said they had locked the journey before they took off to the place of their destination. And they were only following the flat path. So as you begin to walk with God, as you begin to move with God, God has a flight plan for you, which is already locked in, which you must follow in order to have your destiny fulfilled. And until you make a U-turn, you cannot fulfill that destiny. That was, that's what I want to read for you in the book of uh, Luke chapter 15. Let's start from 18. Chapter 15, let's start from it. The prodigal son told the father, he said, eh, I do, I've just given him my own share of my uh, inheritance. I want to go my way and go and enjoy myself. And I want to live my own life by myself. The father said, is that so? He said, okay, this is your inheritance. Take, you can go. And he collected the inheritance and disappeared. <laughs> And you know such inheritance, you know what happens to them. The money you did not work for, it's just you inherited it. You inherited it. Of course, he spent it on riotous living, enjoying his life, prostitutes here, prostitutes there, all kinds of sexual immorality, I'm sure. And he finished the money. The money he thought would last him a lifetime. He finished it in a very short while. And he said, ah, I'm going to return back to my father. Because he was beginning to work as a laborer. Even in a pig's time, eating pig's food. And he said, No, 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 no. I can't continue to eat pig's food. food. In my father's house, there are many mansions there. The, the place is wealthy. Let me return back to my father and begin to eat the food of kings. Look at what he said, verse 18. And whosoever, verse, sorry, verse 18, 15, 18, look at what he said. He said, I will arise and go to my father. And I'll say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. If you belong to that class, where you are not yet in the kingdom and you have been living with what, it's high time you make such a confession and make up your mind that I'm going to return back to my father. And the father is more than ready to accept you back. He said, I will arise and go to my father. And I'll say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. You know, somebody said to me, and a lot of people also say, he said, let me just make heaven. When I die, let me just get to heaven. Even if I'm just going to be sweeping the floor in heaven, after all my waywardness on this earth, let just God forgive me and let me just be sweeping heaven. That is better I go to heaven and be a sweeper on the floor of heaven than to be hell, to be in damnation, place of damnation. That's what this guy says here. He said, I'll, and I'll, I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me one of thy hired servants. Even if you are not going to put a crown on my head, a crown of glory for great works that I should have done for you, just make me to be one of your servants, to be sweeping the floor. And he arose. Some of you will need to arise today and make up your mind. When I give you the altar call, and I say, are you going to accept God, Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Are you going to be, you want to belong to the kingdom? Just quickly follow me 
and say after me when I get to that. I will soon get there, but I have not gotten there yet. So please just bear with me. We will get there. So you need to make the confession. And he arose and came to his father. But when his father, when he was a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. That's how God has been. I've been waiting for so many people. His father was waiting for his return. And before he saw the father, the father had seen him and said, hey, that's my son coming. The father quickly ran out and went to embrace him, kissed him on the neck, kissed him all over the place and said, hey, you are welcome back, my son. Look at what he said. Verse 21. 21 says, And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight. I am no more worthy to be called thy son. So many people are like that across the globe. Ah, some will say, we are in a rich nation. We don't have to, you need to come back to God. Because no matter how rich your nation is, no matter how wealthy you are, no, if you are even a billionaire, a multimillionaire, you have all the luxury, this luxury, all the, you are still going to abandon all those things and return back to him. Make that step of returning back to him today. That's why we have the title, Today is Your Day. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and in thy sight I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Verse 22. But the father said unto his servant, Bring forth the best robe, and put on him, and put a ring in his hand, and shoes on his feet. That's how God works on his soul. He will redecorate them. He will clean them up and redecorate them. That's what God did for people like us. Hallelujah. We were filthy, we were stinking, we were dirty in the mud of waywardness, the moral life, stinking, dirty, useless life. He brought us in. He cleaned us out. Hallelujah. He cleaned our minds out. He cleaned our body out. He cleaned our soul out. He cleaned our spirit out. That's why we are able to come to your presence as your servants this morning and be speaking the word of God to you. God needs to clean some people out this morning. And I believe you are one of them. God will clean you up, put a new robe on you, put a ring on you, put new shoes on you, that you begin to go the right path. And as he puts those things on you, honor and dignity takes you over. Honor, dignity takes you over completely. And nothing will be able to dishonor you anymore. Verse 23. And bring the fattest calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. The father was just Say, hey, let's do it. Give me the fattest calf. Let's eat and be merry. Let's begin to celebrate because our son has returned. That's how, for every sinner that repents on this planet, and every sinner that repents, the hosts of heaven, they rejoice. The angels are rejoicing. Ah, he has turned back from his reward. They are always rejoicing. I pray they will rejoice over you today. In Jesus' name. Verse 24, the last one. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to marry. So shall it be your testimony from now on in the name of As you make up your mind to say, no, I want to return back to God. I want to be living godly life. I want to surrender my life to him. I want him to take charge of my life. I want him to take charge of everything that concerns me. Even now my family too. I want him to take charge. As you make up your mind for him to work, for you, for him to take charge of your life and begin to walk in line with his will and dictate for your life and to obey his commandments, living holy life. Hey, the heaven will just over you. And your life will take a new U-turn completely. Anywhere you are in the world, whether you are in the Americas, in Europe, in Europe, in the Asian continent, in the Pacific, down south, New Zealand, Australia, Africa, anywhere you are, just make up your mind. I want to return back to him. <laughs> That's your base. That's your first love. You need to return back to that first love. Every human being on the planet that need to return back to him. Hallelujah. Forget about the material things you have acquired. You, when you are coming into this world, you didn't bring them. I'm sure you know that. You didn't bring those material things. And when you are leaving this world, you won't take a dime with you. But the th one thing you will take with you is your relationship with God. Is your repentance to God. Is the mercy of God that will speak for you. Is the glory of God that will be ready over you. Those are the things you are going to take back when you return. 
So don't harden your heart today. Make up your mind you want to belong to this kingdom. Make up your mind you want to begin to serve him. Make up your mind that you want to begin to obey his commandments and live holy life. And the rewards are much more than what money can buy. I explained it to you the other day on Friday. Some of the rewards of obedience to God, of belonging to the kingdom. 90% of what you'll be getting, money cannot buy them. Peace of mind, money cannot buy. Divine head, money cannot buy, of belonging to the kingdom. 90% of what you'll be getting, money cannot buy them. Peace of mind, money cannot buy. Divine head, money cannot buy. Sleeping with your two eyes closed in the midst of storm, money cannot buy that. Only the presence of God in your life will buy that. So, today is your day. If you have not given your life to Christ, I want you to quickly say it after me this morning. Are you ready? Are you ready to give your life to Christ? Hallelujah. That's the, that's the only hope you have. Every 7.8 million people, that's the only hope they have in Him. Hallelujah. Because He's the creator of heaven and earth in the first place. Hallelujah. He's your creator. He sent you here. He put you, he put you in your mother's womb to give birth to you. So can you even put you in your mother's womb? And you now get back and say, I'm not old. I'm rebellious against the God that put you in your mother's womb. The same God that you are going to return back to. You can't be rebellious. So just quickly say after me. Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I promise to serve you all the days of my life. I renounce all associations with other extraneous gods. I will no longer serve them. Only you will I serve from henceforth. Just be my Lord and Savior. Order my step into my high places. And I'll be obedient to you forever. If you have said that, I say congratulations. Welcome into the kingdom of the Most High God. Where you are not permitted to lose a battle. The kingdom that is the highest of all kingdoms in the entire universe. The kingdom that is different from the kingdom of this world. Hallelujah. Welcome into it. God bless you. I appreciate you. Find a Bible-believing church around you and begin to go anywhere you are in the world. And if there is no Bible-believing church around you, no problems. Download the software of the Bible into your device and begin to read. Begin to familiarize yourself with Him. The God you are familiar with is the one that will help you to navigate the path of life excellently well. He will be your Google map that will tell you, hey, this is the way to go. Walk in it. Hey, don't go that route. It's, it's laden with disaster. It's laden with booby traps. It's laden with mines that could explode and kill you. Don't go there. Pass this way. Go that way. Go that way. You begin to order your steps and begin to direct your path. Download the software of the Bible into your device and begin to read. Find time to read. Find time to pray and commune with him. Your prayer is your communion with him, your communication with him. Don't shack away your duty of communing with him. If you can commune with your wife, you can commune with your husband, you can commune with your bodies, you can commune with your children, you can commune with your friends. I, 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 should it be difficult for you to commune with your own creator? The creator. Hallelujah. Can any man boast that is wiser than him? So you need to commune with him. And as you come in with him, the challenges you are facing will get easy solution. And you begin to make quantum leaps, to take one higher level to another higher level. Instead of your demotion, you'll be promoted. Hallelujah. So those are the benefits you enjoy in the kingdom of God. So enter into it. Engage with it. Have a solid relationship with him. Then you'll be ordering your steps, directing your path. And I said it earlier, I said everything contrary will see you and disappear. Everything contrary will see you and fade away. I'm sure you know, I don't need to repeat that, you already know that. So, engage with God. God bless you for coming, I appreciate you. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my live show. Three months, six months, one year is better than just monthly subscription. Thank you for all those who have been subscribing. 
I appreciate you. God will multiply you. God will enlarge your course. God will bless the works of your hands. God will give you peace of mind. And you have sowed a seed into the servants of God's life. That seed will bring back multiple fold for you. God will give you peace of mind. And you have sowed a seed into the servants of God's life. That seed will bring back multiple fold for you in Jesus' name. Because the Bible says, whatever a man sows, he shall reap. If you have sowed it, you will reap it in multiple fold. The servants of God's life, that seed will bring back multiple fold for you in Jesus' name. Because the Bible says, whatever a man sows, he shall reap. If you have sowed it, you will reap it in multiple fold.